The last person I have for San Bruno Mountain Watch speakers is uh, Joe Cannon. How much time do you need, Joe? Um, probably 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. Hello, thank you for uh, accepting comments. Um, I uh, just want to give you a quick background so you know who I am and where these comments come from. Um, I've been an ecologist for 15 years, have worked for the National Park Service doing habitat restoration with the Mission Blue Butterfly for the National Park Service um, and monitoring of the Mission Blue there and uh, worked there for 10 years and have worked on San Bruno Mountain for the last five years doing habitat restoration. I'm currently on the HCP Technical Advisory Committee and so I'm very familiar with uh, all the documents and all the processes involved with this process and have been on it since 2006 when it was re-engaged. Uh, um, and so um, what I'm commenting, I'd like uh, to encourage you, in fact, would ask uh, for a new environmental impact report um, for this project. Um, one of the key things with a new environmental impact Impact report is that um, an a new environmental impact report is um, required when the last one, if there's been a significant change in the environment um, that uh, since the last environmental impact report has taken place. And there's been a series of significant changes that have taken place in the last 20 years since the last uh, one that was done in 1989. And so these changes individually, um, each one of them, uh, would call for a new EIR, and collectively they definitely demand a new EIR for this project. So I'm going to go through each one of those in kind. So the first one, uh, and the, one of the more important ones, is since the last EIR, the Calippe silver spot has been listed as an endangered species. In most other situations, this alone would, in fact, um, initiate a new EIR just for this fact alone. Um, and in this case, it is been listed, but um, um, the Fish and Wildlife Service has yet to come out with a recovery plan. This should be coming out in the next few months, but the information from that recovery plan should have, would, and needs to be involved in any decision about significant impact of this or any other development on this particular species. And so there's no way for myself or anyone else to really understand the full impact of the species until that recovery pl pr plan comes out from the experts at the Fish and Wildlife Service. And so that needs to be integrated into any um, uh, understanding of the true impacts of this or any other development. So that's one. Uh, the second one is corridor. In the 1989 EIR, um, one of the things it uh, talks about is an expansion of the corridor between uh, the Northeast Ridge uh, development um, and a, a habitat on either side. Um, in that uh, 1980 I, 89 EIR, uh, they talk about uh, a, read, a read configuration of the development um, 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 to increase the corridor between the, the habitat um, on either side by 450 feet wide. Okay, that, that was what was proposed in 1989. The new development actually narrows that corridor significantly, in some places down to 50 feet. And this corridor is um, uh, more than just uh, uh, narrowing the corridor, it actually eliminates the hilltopping habitat of the where the viola grows as well as where the clippy needs to make that a functioning corridor. So that's another significant change from the earlier EIR that has changed. Um, we do not know if this is going to function as a corridor. Um, what you may have heard in the past, I just showed up because I teach at night, so I don't know if this was commented, but there are other populations on Ice House Hill of the Viola, and there's a population of the Viola in McLaren Park, neither of which currently have the Calippe silver spot butterfly on them. So if the butterfly was going to be actively using, um, you know, they say it's a strong flyer, uh, meaning it can move around a lot, uh, you would expect to find populations in these very near um, Viola um, habitats that are available for them, but they have not shown up in these two habitats. What this means is this corridor means a lot, um, and the quality of this corridor means a lot. And a sh there's a significant change between the last EIR and this one. Again, what needs to be a new EIR is required because the environment under which this development is going has changed, um, and uh, because the corridor has narrowed significantly and the quality of that corridor has has changed. Um, another major factor that has taken place in the last 20 years is a large amount of money has been invested in restoration. So 20 years ago, similar to today, uh, money is being offered for the restoration of these species habitat. Uh, well, we now have 20 years of on the ground actions that should be evaluated. Um, there, if an EIR is not done, this evaluation is not happening. There's no way we have 20 years of experience. We should be able now to fully understand what 
a dollar will buy us. Will it buy us actual habitat restoration or not? Um, and in my opinion, out on the hill, um, what habitat restoration has been focused on in the last 20 years is simply using herbicides against large invasives. But having been to these locations, just getting rid of the large invasives such as broom or gorse does not mean restoration, does not mean lupins come up, does not mean the uh, nectar plants um, establish. It just simply means the elimination of these large weeds. That has been the primary focus of restoration over the last 20 years. So it, it makes sense if you're about to propose more habitat being destroyed, we have 20 years of data that should be reviewed and real questions from outside experts should be invested in the idea, does this mitigation even seem possible and is it even feasible with the amount of money going through? You, if, we, if you guys move forward and do not request a new EIR, you will never know that. And more importantly, this information needs to come. We need to figure out whether this goes forward or not. This information is going to be required if we ever want to manage these species in the future. And instead of the money that's now proposed for mitigation and restoration, that money, a portion of it will have to go to get these basic under, uh, baseline studies done to understand these stuff so we can actually do future habitat restoration or management in the future. The EIR is the place for this kind of study to happen, and the developer, because EIRs are, you know, uh, initiated, the developer is the person who should be paying for these, not the butterfly, and not money that is supposed to be mitigating restoration for those. So again, the EIR is the only process and the only place where this should be happening. And so again, I request, because of significant changes since uh, two, 20 years ago as today, this is the place to do it. And 20 years, we have all of this action. It should be reviewed independently, and EIR would do that. The environment of which those decisions were made and that EIR have changed the environment for the, both the butterfly as well as the overall environment of how it's being uh, um, uh, managed has changed. And there's data out there. We need that. It needs to be put into that EIR. And the last thing, just to be really clear, both then as now, there's an assumption that we can restore clippy habitat. And as you all hopefully have heard at least once or twice tonight, if not, is viola has never been successfully restored. That habitat has never been successfully restored. So that again, underlying is a predication that we can actually mitigate this damage. Uh, the, the money you're giving, you're not just giving it to the wind. You're, the whole point of it, if you read that, is about um, restoration of new habitat. And as we know, viola cannot be currently restored. One thing that can happen in this EIR is experts can be brought in to figure out how this, can, this problem can be surmounted, or if it can be. It also gives us a very clear sense of what we can do with this money um, in terms of what can, where it can be applied. If we don't know what we've done with the last 20 years and what methods have worked or not worked, we can't possibly know how to spend the next bunch of money coming down the pike, which is a, essentially what this project's been traded for. So again, a new EIR would clear up this information. This uh, uh, would have to be done as part of this process. And we would be very clear about the true impacts. Your job is to figure out what the impacts of this development will have. And w without a new error, you can't, I can't, no one in this room can really understand that until we review the information that's out there. And again, I've gone to a number of locations that um, maps show that should have habitat for both the Clippy Silver Spot and the Mission Blue. And there's been changes over these last 20 years in the ecology. There's been ongoing habitat succession, meaning scrub has been moving into these grassland habitats in the absence of regular fire. There's also been the invasion of a whole lot of weeds not just the ones that have been sprayed, the large weeds, but many small weeds, including uh, English plantain, uh, sheep sorrel. These are small weeds that even if you pull out the large weeds will quickly move in and have consistently removed and eliminated not only the food plants, but also the nectar plants for the, both these species. And I've gone to locations where these butterflies are supposed to be and have found no viola or only occasional lupins. So a lot of habitat that's being considered still viable habitat um, is not any longer from my experience on the mountain. And so the idea that this, this impact is only a small percentage of the overall population is not, in fact, um, what's going on. We need to reevaluate the entire population uh, to understand the current conditions and to know what size this impact is going to have on the overall uh, long-term future of these two species. Um, thank you. Great. Perfect. Thank you, Joe.